My check, my check, one, two, one, two. What's going on, everybody? How are you doing? Me, I'm doing fine. In case you don't know who I am, I'm Ebo Sosa, and welcome to my show. If you're a new viewer, you need to subscribe to this channel right now. You'll also want to hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my future uploads because this channel, I promise you, you're going to like. I present substance and rare music to balance your mind. And with that said, this show is sponsored by A Game. A Game is a male herbal supplement that is specifically designed for men. Ladies, you cannot take this. It is designed to enhance our mental clarity, our libido, our energy, and our overall health. And trust me, it works, you guys. So, let's jump right into the show. I found a book called Emasculation by Sharon L. Sykes that inspired me to do this show. This show is specifically designed for the ladies who have had or are having major problems with men. If you're the type of lady that thinks there are no good men out here, that all men are dogs, um, that all men lie, all men are sick abusers. Matter of fact, if you say all men all the time when you talk about the problems you've had with men, this one's for you. And first of all, let me tell you, speaking in absolutes concerning human beings, eh, that kind of makes you sound like an idiot because all people are not the same, okay? Everyone lives in their reality built from their individual experiences of life. And we act on the basis of what we perceive our model of the world. Do you understand? So to the ladies who think in absolutes when it comes to men, I'd like to ask you a serious question. Where is your daddy? Was your daddy in your life? Did you even know who your father was? And if so, what kind of daughter are you? Now, <laughs> don't go getting into your feelings so fast to those of you who are listening to me and you happen to be females. Don't go wilding out. Trust me, I'm going to explain what I mean by asking the question, what kind of daughter are you? Okay. But to begin with, we need to go all the way back to how you were loved see, not enough credence is given to the importance of the role daddy plays in daughter's lives. From the very beginning, he is the man that you trusted the most in your most vulnerable states. If you had a daddy in your life, you're either doing what he said not do or doing what he said do. He has subconsciously had so much impact and influence on your life that your whole life is a voyage to get back to the place of intimate trust. You see, you got to understand that daddy sets the course and launched you into the world of love. He's your point of reference in the embodiment of love for good or for bad. Okay. When it comes to relationships, he's your emotional blueprint. He's the anchor and the fastener to keep you safe through all of life's early emotional storms. Your daddy was to give you the first lesson about covering, and he was supposed to be your first line of defense who imprinted his love perspective on your life. To know who you really are and how you really love, you must confront who your daddy really was and how he really loved. You understand what I'm saying? Like it or not, healthy or skewered, you bring his love worldview to the relationship table. All right. So with that said, again, I ask the question, where is your daddy? Did you even know who your father was or do you know who your father was? And if so, what kind of daughter are you? 
See, the way I see it, either you were loved right or you were loved wrong. And with that said, I'm going to cover four types of daughters. And you can determine which one or what combination you fall into. So, let's talk about the daughter who was loved right because she had her daddy's love. What does she look like? Hmm. Well, she is fiercely loyal and will give her last, but be warned, there's another side to her. When it comes to protecting her man, she pulls her sword and she ain't going to back down from adversity. She ain't going to show no fear. She's going to take it all the way there to defend her daddy's honor. And you know what? She'd even wear that orange jumpsuit with pride and dignity. Because her closeness to her daddy has given her instincts like a third eye, which heightens her sensitivity to her man. She would do exactly what her daddy told her. And she'll even add a few of her own survival skills in the mix, of course. Now, because of this closeness in training... Daddy's girl will cause her man to rise to kingship because she understands and is comfortable with the man-woman partnering dynamic. See? She's witnessed it and learned it firsthand, and she is now a champion of the male role model because she knows and appreciates the importance of his presence. Her husband will reign supreme in his vocation and his home will be a royal castle. And you know what? It could be a one bedroom or a studio apartment, but daddy's girl will make him forget all about the unfair encounters he experiences outside the home because from daddy's molding, she's a strong but soft and attentive woman who loves hard and is committed to her love. She will say with pride, there's nothing greater than a father's love. Now, does this sound like you? Can you relate to this little girl? If so, understand that you're very rare these days and times. And brothers, trust me, you want to pay close attention if you run into one of these sisters, okay? Now, the next type of daughter I want to talk to you about is the daughter who was loved wrong because of daddy's desertion. Now, the reasons for desertion matter not, okay? This girl, well, she kind of mirrors the girl who was loved right. Because she recalls daddy's love and protection and strength as she excitedly jumped into his arms as he came through the front door after work, you know? She remembers being read nursery rhymes by Daddy and tucked in bed at night. But those times were short-lived. But one day, Daddy just stopped coming around. He moved out and started another family on the other side of the country, or on the other side of town. And even as a child... She remembers the insecurity that filled her heart when her covering was removed. She vividly remembers all of the attention he gave to his new family, which which she considers hers, and how the strangers became a part of her life through force. She had a front row seat to witness her father doing fatherly duties for another family better than he did with his original family. And this introduced her, at a very young age, to the jilted feelings of loneliness, dereliction, rejection, and abandonment. This child, as a woman, is still jaded and bitter. Now, what's quite interesting is that she wants him to hold her even though she can't stand the thought of him touching her. She loves him and hates him and she means both of them she wants him to stay alive even though she no longer cares if he lives or dies and the more she cries for him 
the angrier she becomes because he never returns. This is why, as a woman, when the men in her life appear shaky or shady, she vicariously relives the memories of Daddy walking out the front door, ignoring her cries to come back. Now, no matter what age you are, you will never forget that feeling. It doesn't go away. It lies dormant because what you saw out of your eyes now determines your norm. Now, can you relate to this little girl? Is this the type of daughter you are? Take a little time to reflect and we'll move on. The next type of daughter I'd like to discuss is the one who's loved wrong because of her daddy's absence. Now, this poor little girl knows nothing of a good daddy's love, strength, character, and example. She never had the privilege to experience good daddy behavior, even for a brief period of time. She never had daddy to serve a cup of tea to her from the play kitchen, you know what I mean? She never had a daddy to teach her to ride a bike or to get picked up from school. And she never had a man step in and claim her as his daughter. She was left to find her way and figure it out on her own. She is unfamiliar with the affection of a father on any level, and to her, her vacancy feels normal. But as a woman, she enters every relationship with a man at a distinct disadvantage and learns by trial and error using secondhand information. This baby girl is now a grown woman with a variety of relationship challenges. Love is confusing, dating is distorted. She feels lost, searching for something that she won't recognize or know how to handle even if she somehow miraculously stumbles upon it. Her first love encounter left her hurt, disappointed, and even more troubled. Most of the time, her heart is on autopilot, living in a state of emotional suspense, unfamiliar with and even diametrically opposed to unconditional love. Everything is on fleek on the outside, but still love is fleeting and life is a circle. So she meets a nice guy. He's the guy that every woman wants. He's attracted to her because his hunting instinct detects the same rejection in her that lives in him. His dysfunction appeals to her need for acceptance. He rarely encountered his mother's hugs as she never knew her daddy's covering. She had no way of knowing that his greatest skill was his detachment. He's a master at not allowing anyone into his heart to expose him to more hurt and pain. Their attractive exteriors lured them to each other, and the magnetic forces of their dysfunction pulled them together in spite of their repulsion. <laughs> They're just two souls with holes and no controls on a journey to fill a void. As their lives slowly circle a drain, neither one is aware of their godly power, place, and position. It keeps ending badly, but that doesn't stop the cycle. If your daddy was missing, that empty space trained your spirit how to perform to receive the love that your soul craves. When your value was based on your actions, it is known as performance-based relationships. A dysfunctional heart only feels worth when it is performing to receive acceptance. Be careful. Your inner child still begs to not be left alone, and you will give the performance of your life just for companionship. And this little girl, now in a grown woman's body, is trapped in a world where she cannot comprehend unconditional love, but routinely performs for a love that is not satisfying. Mm -mm -mm. Does that sound like you? Are you this daughter? Why don't you take a moment to reflect?
Now let's discuss this last daughter. This last daughter who was loved wrong because of her daddy's abusive presence. Now, abuse can come in many forms, so I'm just going to pick one narrative, although there are so many others that I can choose from. I'll just choose this heartbreaking one. This little girl's daddy stayed home, but repeatedly cheated on her mom. She lives in the bizarre world of the model home that was perfectly broken, a hermetically sealed laboratory that was the perfect environment to grow the seeds of hatred and distrust towards men and spurn side chicks. As an adolescent, she is forced to watch her mom die a slow death at the hands of a player. In most of her life, she grew up confused kind of like in a tug of war that regularly demanded that she choose her allegiance to one parent or the other. Now, she loves daddy, but emotionally bears all of mommy's stripes. And the worst part of her type of bondage is that with each generation, the curse grows stronger. It gets easier for each descendant to be another victim who is expecting of abuse in the life of fakery. When you're a settler, your victimization forms a mistress mentality where any love is better than no love is conceived and all your wealth and achievements won't allow you to escape it. Does that sound like you? Hmm. As a matter of fact, let me ask you, which little girl are you? If you think that there are no good men out here, that all men are dogs, that all men are sick abusers, that all men lie, all men, all men, all men, if you say it all men, my advice to you is to learn what your love imprint is before getting involved in a relationship. What I've noticed is that Something happens on a spirit level when a little girl grows up in an emotionally off-balanced, toxic environment. If you witnessed repeat abuse, you've learned not only how to be abused, but you unknowingly became the master of masking pain. The ability to settle for abuse lies dormant in you. And worse than that, you have a victim's posture that attracts abusers to what's in you. You see, there's a reason why you keep quote-unquote dating all the crazy guys. There's a reason why you keep on saying all men, all men, all men. Because let me tell you something. These broken men don't need psychology degrees to diagnose your condition. Because their dysfunction smells the victim in you. And then they treat you accordingly. It is no coincidence that they too grew up in an abusive environment because the universe knows what's going on inside all of us. Spirits are attracted to their like kind. I would tell you to be determined to discover yourself, to surround yourself with godly men, and to learn what accountability is as well. Did your daddy manipulate? Was your daddy mean? Was your daddy egotistical? Did he have a temper? You see, his most prevalent traits hides dormant in you. What I am trying to do here is equip you with the understanding that fathers provide their daughters with a masculine example. They teach their children about respect and boundaries and help put daughters at ease with other men throughout their lives. So, if you didn't grow up with a proper example, you will have less insight, and you'll be more likely to go for a man that will replicate the abandonment of your father. I really hope that you hear what I'm saying to you, and I hope that you've enjoyed this show. I'm going to shut it down and ponder a part two to this show, talking about what can be done What can be prayed for? What directions can you maneuver your mind into becoming healed? I hope you've enjoyed this, as I said. 
peace.